I have made $4,159 in points over the last year using one single credit card. But is it still the best credit card? To find out, I've compiled all the relevant credit cards in my spreadsheet from Chase, Capital One, and American Express. These are the premier travel credit cards, and I'm gonna use real spending examples to find out mathematically which credit card is returning the most value. First, let me reveal the credit card that I've been using over the last year, which has got me so much value. It is the Capital One Venture X credit card. This is a travel-oriented credit card with a high annual fee of $395. However, don't let that scare you because it has tons of free bonuses that make the annual fee irrelevant. I get $300 every year in travel credits. So as long as I'm taking one trip per year, one flight is all it takes and $300 is taken out of that annual fee which for me is guaranteed. I've got family out of town. We're gonna to take at least one vacation. That 300 credit is happening. On my anniversary, I get $100 in free points. So instead of a $395 annual fee, it's really just a $5 credit guaranteed every year to hold this credit card. That's one reason why I'm a huge fan of the VentureX, but let's get on to where I'm getting my points. So in travel credits, I got the $300 in price protection credits, I got $130. And this was not a perk that I knew existed until I did an audit of where my points were coming from. Over the next 10 days, if the price dips, I get a credit for the difference up to $50. We took a lot of trips in the last year, more than normal. So I got a lot of credits for that. Another type of credit that I could have been taken advantage of is the price matching. So next year, I'll be looking for price match as well. A big complaint on using the travel portals is that they jack the prices up on the portals to compensate for the perks that they give you. Well, on Capital One, that's not a concern because if you look at the direct pricing with the airlines, if it's a cheaper price, you can get that price matched and then you still get price protection if the price drops on the portal over the next 10 days. So that's pretty big. For just basic spending, I got $2,578 in points. I get at least two points, or sorry, two miles per dollar spent on all purchases. I get five miles per dollar spent on flights booked through the Capital One portal, and I get 10 miles per dollar spent on rental cars and hotels. So clearly lots of points for travel expenses. I got $300 in lounge value. And this is another one that I could take more advantage of next year. I didn't realize this. I thought I was only able to go to the Capital One Lounge, but after looking at the fine print, I've now realized that I have access to the Priority Pass, which gives me access to thousands of lounges, maybe not thousands, but over a thousand lounges. So it should have been $600 in value. My annual sign-up bonus, in this case, I got $750 on my anniversaries. It's only gonna be $100 going forward, but I did cash in on the $750 sign up bonus. And then finally, I got $100 from the TSA pre-check slash global entry credit. Every four years when I renew those things, I get a $100 credit towards that. This totals to $4,159. Now, if I subtract out the annual fee, my net benefit would be $3,764. Clearly the Capital One Venture X is a badass credit card but is it still gonna give me the most value? Time to look at my spreadsheet and see which credit cards are gonna rival the VentureX at my spending level. I'm also gonna check other spending levels for different types of people to see which credit cards might be the best for you. So here is my dashboard on my credit card spreadsheet. This first section on the left is my budget. This is roughly how much I'm planning to spend on my credit card. I've got every category you can think of, but most importantly, I have all the categories that are showing up on the credit cards. If some spending category is gonna affect a bonus or if different spending categories are gonna give more or less points per dollar spent, those are broken out on this budget. So I've got monthly expenses, I've got yearly expenses, and then it totals up on the right. I've got all my utilities, gas, water, electric, internet, car expenses, and then the expenses section is just your typical credit card expenses. So I'll hit some of the bigger categories. Dining, this is eating out. I'm expecting to spend roughly 4,800 per year. Groceries, 7,200. Amazon, 4,800. My wife is an Amazon fiend. Flights, 5,000 in a year. 3,000 on hotels. So some of the bigger spending categories, these are gonna be the ones that really drive which credit card is gonna be right for us. The user profile section, 
is where I determine which bonuses I'm actually gonna take advantage of. So right now I've got zero in all of these categories. In most of them, I either put a one or a zero, a one for yes, I'm gonna take advantage of it, and a zero for no, I'm not. A couple of these, I need to actually put in a number other than one or zero, and then there's a percentage-based one as well. So all of these user profile numbers will affect how many points the backend tabs are calculating. So as a quick example, if I go to the Capital One tab, I can see VentureX on the right, all of these points, for annual travel credit, this is a zero because I have zero trips per year. So it's not tallying in the annual travel credit. For lounge access, it's got a zero in there because it's not counting any travel per year. Price match protection, another zero. Global entry pre-check, that's a zero. Sign up bonus, that's a zero because I've got a section here for first year only. This is for when I want to look at churning a credit card because some credit cards, they give you a lot of bonuses in that first year alone. But for this pricing exercise, I don't want to know about year one only bonuses. I want to see which card is going to be the best year after year after year. The final section of this dashboard is the ranking of the credit cards. So currently this ranking is taking into account my current spending and it's taking into account my current user profile, which is a zero across the board. With that in mind, the best credit card for me currently is the Prime Visa. It'll be interesting to see how this ranking is gonna change after I start changing my user profile. So let's go ahead and run through it. Global entry pre-check, my wife and I will utilize that. So I'm gonna put a one in that category. Number of trips per year, we're expecting four trips in the next year. Number of travelers, two, that's for my wife and I. Flex quarter spending, this is for the Chase Freedom Flex card. We think we'll hit 50% of the Chase Flex spending categories that, that change every quarter. Clear Plus, this is similar to Global Entry PreCheck. We're not gonna use it. Home Chef Kit, this is where they ship you prepackaged meals for you to cook at home. We don't do it. The Hotel Upgrade Credit, this is something that I could only utilize with American Express if I was gonna be staying at hotels for sure every time in their hotel program. I don't think we will. Sometimes we hit Airbnb, so I'm gonna leave a zero in that category. First year only. I'm gonna keep a zero because I wanna know beyond the first year bonuses. Uber, we don't use it. Lyft Pink, no. DoorDash, no. Chase Travel, yes, I would use the Chase Travel portal if a Chase credit card came up. Walmart Plus, we don't use it. Disney Plus, they went downhill. Dunkin' Donuts, sure, why not? I could utilize some Dunkin' Donuts credits. Would I make 30 transactions or more in a given month? I'm gonna say yes. There are some perks that depend on that. And then Resi, restaurants. This is for making reservations on special restaurants. I'll put a yes there. So after filling out that user profile section, I will now filter for the top credit card. And once again, the Capital One Venture X is the top credit card for me. This is calculating $1,853 minimum in value that I would receive if I stick to this spending profile. Now, one thing to note about these travel credit cards is the more you spend, Sometimes a different credit card will jump out on top. And then if you're spending less, then a different credit card might win. So with this button right here, it's very handy. I can decide, am I gonna hit 100% of my budget or am I gonna hit less or more? So first let's check and see if I spend 150% of my budget. So now I'll re resort for the top credit card. And now the Chase Sapphire Reserve is just barely on top by about $19. So now let's check the other end. If I'm only spending, 75% of my budget. Resort from best to worst, and the Venture X is still on top with Chase Sapphire Reserve in second place. Now, if I'm only spending 50% of my budget, once again, the Venture X is still on top. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it, and I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. Clearly the Capital One Venture X credit card is undisputed the best credit card for my type of spending. But now I wanna look at some other types of spending. What credit cards are gonna be the best for some of y'all out there that don't spend money the way I do? So the first type of person I wanna look at is the hermit build. I wanna look at somebody who doesn't go on flights. They're not traveling. They're not going out to restaurants as much. They wanna do Amazon. They want stuff brought to their door. They're gonna do DoorDash and they're gonna have online purchases. So you can see the, the top hitting categories now are Amazon, dining and groceries have gotten lower. DoorDash is up there at $72 per year. I left $500 in there for flights, $5,000 per year 
for online purchases. Now let's look at the user profile section. I've zeroed out all of the travel related user profile perks. So we've got 100% on the flex quarter spending. I've got one in there for Uber, one for DoorDash, Walmart Plus, sure, Disney Plus, Dunkin' Donuts, yes to 30 transactions and no to the Resi restaurants. So with this user profile and this type of spending, the top credit card is now the Freedom Flex credit card. In fact, the top three credit cards are all Chase credit cards, Freedom Flex, Freedom Unlimited, and Prime Visa. Now you can tweak some of the spending and some of the user profiles to see which credit cards come out on top in different situations. For instance, if I didn't think that I would be able to hit all four quarters of the flex spending, they change the category on you every quarter, maybe that's only 50%. I can see that the Freedom Flex is now no longer on top. Let's do a resort. Now the Freedom Unlimited is on top. Let's return that to the way it was. Let's say this person spends way more on Amazon. Right now I've got $6,000 per year on Amazon. Let's change that to $1,000 per month, $12,000 per year, resort. And now the Prime Visa is on top. So you can see, you can play with these different spending categories and see what kind of spending you actually have to do in order to make different credit cards come out on top. So let's return that to the way it was. And then I can also give this the same treatment that I gave my spending category. I can see what happens if I go over budget as a hermit. If I'm spending 150%, then the Freedom Unlimited is now on top. It's no longer the Freedom Flex. And if I'm spending 75% of my budget, then the Freedom Flex is back on top. The next type of spender I want to look at is a person who likes to go out for dinner. They like to go out to the bars. So I've got way more money in the dining category. I've got $1,000 per month in the entertainment category. Fewer flights, I've trimmed that down to 2,000, 2,000 on hotels, trimmed down the online purchases. And then in the user profile section, I'm assuming two trips per year, two travelers. I'm gonna keep the, the flex spending. And then on the right, I'm putting in everything. We got Uber, Lyft Pink, Dash Pass. So with that in mind, the new top credit card is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. If you are exceeding that budget, oops, not 15%, 150%, and we re-filter, the Chase Sapphire Reserve is even more so on top. And then if we trim the budget down to 75%, Chase Sapphire Reserve still on top. You can see with the different types of spending, the different types of user profiles, you can use this spreadsheet to see which credit card is gonna be the best one for you. However, this spreadsheet is only looking at one credit card at a time. In this video right here, I go over the simplest and best combination of credit cards. Check it out, catch you on the flip side.